Hey, what is going on? Um, welcome to Beautiful Start Podcast Live here on the YouTube page. If this is your first time tuning in and listening, please subscribe, like, and comment. And I would like to uh, thank all the new uh, subscribers, the people who have been sharing the show and liking the show. I truly appreciate it. Um, so tonight's show is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to be um, discussing a movie. The movie is titled Sleeping with the Enemy. It was, um, it came out in 1991. Um, it is based off of a book, uh, a novel at that, um, that came out in 1987. Uh, the author was Nancy Price, so her book is also um, titled Sleeping with the Enemy. So if you are interested in, you know, that movie, definitely check it out. But I'm going to be discussing it um, tonight um, because I feel as though that movie is uh, relevant today. Um, so I'm going to talk about it. Um yeah, so I guess I'll start with the the beginning. Well, this is definitely a spoiler alert for those who haven't seen it. But if you want to tune in and listen to the breakdown, definitely listen to it. Um, it's definitely informative or or whatever. But um, yeah, so basically, uh, the the opening of the movie is uh. Well, actually, the main characters of the movie, you have a husband and wife, um, Martin and Laura, uh, no, wait, uh, Martin and Laura Bernie. So that's the couple, that's their name. So uh, the beginning of the movie, you see uh, Laura, the wife, Who's kind of like, you know, she's picking up uh, clams on the beach, um, you know, so she could prepare them. And I guess the only time like to have these clams is like fresh, like you got to have them fresh. But, you know, her husband comes along and and uh, tell her tell her that, you know, he's going to uh, cancel the party uh, that they were invited to. He's just, you know tell them that you know they're not gonna go and she's like you know oh no I could um come back out and uh tomorrow and get clams I could just do this another time and so he like you know excited or whatever so uh then you have the next scene where she's like um getting ready for the party she's already dressed she already have her outfit on very beautiful outfit. Her hair is done the way she wanted to be done. She got her earrings on. You know, her makeup done. Like, she, that's how she wanted to look. That's how she dressed herself, right? So, he comes along and criticizes her, saying that, oh, he wouldn't have decided to wear that dress, you know? So, immediately, she thought, like, okay, the red dress, you know, because, you know, guys like red dresses. Or at least that's what the media puts out there whoa <laughs> so he like oh no I was thinking more like you know the black dress so here's here's the thing with this right and you have to listen closely ladies because when you think about like relationships right it's a dynamic of you know power and control so she eventually, you know, goes on and um, <clears throat> she goes on and, you know, allow him to dress her like with the black dress. And, you know, she changed she changed everything. She changed the way her hair looks. She changed the outfit like he dressed her or whatever. But when you think about power and control and the red flags of relationships like um, domestic violence, things that could lead up to that, um this is where it starts like where a guy is you know telling you how to dress or what to look like and stuff like that this is this did not have anything to do with like a dress code you know how when you go to certain events and you know 
you can't wear certain clothes. Like you, ha- you have to wear. It's like a dress code. So this is not a thing where you know he's coming to her like, oh, there's a dress code. You gotta wear this kind of dress, or you gotta, you know, you can't wear, you can't dress casual. You gotta dress, you know, up or, you know, it wasn't like that. It was like, oh, I don't like what you got on. You gotta change that. You know, you my um my arm candy. So you gotta look a certain kind of way. You know, that's that's why I took, you know, because she completely changed everything like that out. Like her hair is even in a different manner. Like he want her to be more of a dark feminine, like the way that, you know, she look. And it's more so like she's like a soft feminine, like, you know, the outfit that she had on was white, but he wanted her to wear black. But my thing is, like, when you think about that, how it translates in real life, a lot of women deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if it's on, like, a, a, a small scale, like, you know, you have some men out there who be like, yo, I don't want my woman to be wearing no sneakers, no Jordans, no, you know, I don't want a woman that's dressed down. She got to be dressed up all the time. She got to look this kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Or wear her hair this kind of way. And utilizing a woman, thinking a woman are a doll or something like that, where, you know what I'm saying? It's not like, oh, you're suggesting an outfit, you know what I'm saying, or or anything like that. You know, there's some people out there who are into fashion, you know, but I'm talking about those uh, people out there who want to completely just turn their spouse and partners into somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to mold her into uh, the person that you want her to be rather than accepting, you know, your wife for who she is and, and you know, her creative style. Um, because that's what it's to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, these are my opinions, um, but they're factual. You feel what I'm saying? But, like, uh, that's where uh, it, it kind of starts off at, like, when you think of red flags and, you know, and abusive relationships, like, you know, those are things to kind of, like, look at, you know, like, all right, he's he's telling me to how to dress or he's throwing out my clothes. He's telling me to that I can't look like this or I can't present myself like this. I have to look a certain kind of way. That's, you know, that it starts off like that. You know, uh, like I said, they go into like some kind of party, right? Even when they go within a party, everyone is dressed different. Everyone is dressed like, you know, it's just a regular party. Like, you show up how you want to look, how you want to present yourself. Like I said, it wasn't like a party where it was like a dress code, you know, where everyone had on black. Black, you know, he he had her wearing like a whole evening gown and people in there looked at quite regular. You feel what I'm saying? If you will. Like, they came to just turn up and just have a good time. You know, and he got her with this evening gown on, like, she about to get nominated for an award. You feel me? Like, where they do that at? But uh, that's where you uh, think about, like, uh, red flags. Because, like, you know, within <clears throat> red flags, uh, you notice these things. Right. That's why when a uh, woman is so um, totally immersed in an abusive relationship, like some women think to themselves, like, well, damn, how did it get here? Right. Now I'm, I'm showing you like the red flags, like when someone's trying to telling you what to wear, like, oh, we're not leaving until you change your clothes. Like you're not looking like this or you feel what I'm saying? Like you're not uh, you're not going out with me like this, right? And when you're in a relationship with somebody for so long, you kind of know what ticks them off. But, you know, of course, in the movie, she changes her clothes, right? Put put on the dress that he wanted her to wear. She had, she put on the, the black earrings. 
um, she changed her hair because she had her hair like in a uh, in like a bun, a bun to the back, and now her hair is like hanging down long, right? So when the next scene, um, you know, of course they go to the party, and she was like socializing like across the room from him. And he kind of, like, gave her a look, like, all right, what you doing? Like, you feel me? Like, he looked at her like, yo, what what, what we doing here? Like, what, like, you know, gave her that look. And she just went over to him. And she was like, oh, I've been socializing for too long. And she he was like, oh, for the whole season. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that can highlight the isolation. You know what I'm saying? Because with the... With abusive relationships, like, they want to control who you talk to and how long you talk to them, you know, or they will, uh, you know, keep you away from your friends and family, you know. And they, you know, they insist that you stop, you know, hanging out and spending time with friends and family, you know what I'm saying? So it's like if that's the case of course he doesn't want her to meet new people or you know uh speak to anyone outside of him because that would influence her freedom so right now he got her like under like a a leash if you will you know because like I said these kind of relationships are geared towards power and control you know I'm saying you have one partner who want to just have all the power and they want their partner to like kind of like be dragged along like they they serve in or something like that so he basically gave her that look like yo yeah they at the party and she can't even enjoy herself like you know what i'm saying when you go to a party like when i go to lounges and clubs like yes i hang out you feel me i do so like when i go to things like that of course you want to just fill the room out and socialize like I'm from the ever like where we socialize that's how we met our people like that's how you met people you had to go out and do things now people be on apps and you know they uh get introduced by introduced to someone by like their photos like oh I like the way the photo look or you know the way he presented himself in the video but it's all image you feel what I'm saying like when you think about it it's really like or image it's really like how you attracted to this person or whatever you know but you really don't even know know the people because it's like you know you talk to someone on the app and then like y'all exchange numbers y'all talk on the phone or y'all meet up at like a restaurant or a, a club or whatever but it's it's not the same like when you first in front of somebody and you really you know vibing with them and filling them out you know of course you don't know these people <laughs> like you know you just now meeting them because of course people are gonna uh put their first their best face forward they're not gonna show you their bad side you feel what i'm saying and some people don't care they they gonna show you who they who they are you feel I me mean? but I know now people like to, you know, meet up online and then, like, go to, like, restaurants, go, you know, go out on dates, like, you're dating and stuff like that. But, you know, during my time, because I keep saying during my time, I'm 40, so I don't know, like, the age bracket. Like, some people are younger than me, some people are older, listening to this this episode. But um, when you hanging out, like, regardless of your age, you feel what I'm saying? Like... You guys all know what it's like to have a good time at a party. You know what I'm saying? And you having a good time. You you dancing, you drinking, you talking, you socializing. And some people be like a little bit too turned up, too lit. And they just want some drunk, stupid shit. <laughs> so... But for the most part, you socialize and you 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 talk and you you communicate and you know what I'm saying you getting to know people or dancing you know don't nobody go to the you know uh uh lounge or club and just stand there and watch or some I mean <laughs> I can't even say that because there's some people in there that just be like you know playing the wall all night you know but anywho 
like he kind he got you know he looked out he got jealous like yo what you know like why you over there you know so that was that scene and so like i guess it's like the next day and you know i'm switching the scenes and stuff like that um so it's like the next scene and he like in the bathroom and he noticed the towels cuz he like a, a a neat freak type of person like uh and I'm talking about the husband, Martin. So he's in the bathroom, I guess, you know, or doing what he do. And so he looks over and he noticed that the towels are not organized. They looking all, you know, out of order. So instead of fixing them, which, which people do, like, all right, if you see something that's a little bit, it's your house, you know what I'm saying? You see something out of order in your house, you're not going to call somebody to do it. You fix it or whatever. But instead, like... He went to where she was at. Um, she was, like, outside, uh, you know, I guess eating breakfast or whatever. They have, like, a house that's on the beach. Of, like, this house, when I tell you this house is nice, it's mad nice. It's, like, a lot of glass, uh, you know, windows. Uh, and it's right by the beach, right by the water. Beautiful house. So she, like, on, like, the little terrace part outside by the table, and she's like, I guess, having breakfast or something like that. And so he comes out, like, you know, and try to, like, go behind her and, I guess, whisper something in her ear and then directs her to the bathroom and then shows her, like, look at this, these towels. And so she immediately lined them up and fixed them, right? So I guess homie got, like, OCD or something like that when it comes to, like, the house because, uh... You know, he goes about doing whatever he was doing in the bathroom and she goes in a in a in a kitchen and you could tell like she's like nervous and like timid and she's like you know, like thinking like, Oh my god, I could have got my you know, things could have went left. Like I could it could have been a, a you know it could have been it could have turned bad, it could have got ugly. So that's what she looked like. She she thinking, and then all of a sudden she goes to like the cabinet, right? So he's like the type of person where the house got to be a certain type of way, the towels got to be a certain kind of way, and the um the jars and the um so it's like in the cabinet. Um, she went through there, like she went to fix like the jars, the cans, like the um different things that they had in the cabinet, like you know the food. You know, they have cans, jars, teas. Um, so he likes it to be lined up like a certain type of way, like organized. Like everything got to be organized. And so she proceeded to like organize the cabinet and stuff because she ain't want to, like she already knew that, okay, this towel thing went off. You know what I'm saying? Anything else that could happen today could result in deadly so she already, like, you know, to me, like, studied the dude. Like, all right, I know what, you know, triggers him. And so her her whole thing is just surviving for the day, like, trying to avoid attacks from her uh, her husband. So, you know, she fixed the cans and did all that. And so, you know, he comes out the bathroom or whatever, and um, he leaves the home and she's just like, you know, in the kitchen or whatever, you know, about to prepare dinner or whatever. Because, you know, when he came in there, she she told him like, oh, this is what we're going to have for dinner or whatever like that. So he proceeds to like, you know, leave the home. And so I guess he notices like this this young man like with a boat, like fixing it or whatever. And so, you know, he goes over there. um and um introduces himself to the guy on the dock because the the guy he had like a boat and i guess he was like uh you know like he just pulled into the dock so i guess he's getting a secure there so you know the guy introduces himself like you know i'm john i'm i'm your next door neighbor and you know he introduces himself or whatever and then you know this guy tells him that you know okay because he introduced himself and he said well, 
Martin, her husband, introduces herself and be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I live over here and stuff like that. And then John is like, okay, well, that must be your, your wife that I've been seeing that's staring out of the window. So that's what he said. He, and she, he like, yeah, you know, yeah, that's my wife. Well, he didn't say that's my wife. He just said, he just said her name. And so, you know, John just was like, you know, you're a lucky man to have her. You know, I admire your house, you know, like complimenting him on how nice the house is. Like he ain't say nothing more, nothing less. Right. And so they go on about um, they have like the boat, you know, the man, John, he has his boat. So Martin is, you know, admiring his boat and um telling discussing him i'm telling him like you know oh you have a nice boat and stuff like that and he tells john that you know this used to be my passion um but he's saying that you know he doesn't really uh you know sell anymore or go out on boats because his wife laura is uh can't swim and she almost died as a child so he basically you know uh, tells this man that, that, you know, he don't even know this guy. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So, but he's saying like, you know, as a child, she almost drowned. And so I find that so interesting. Like, all right, your wife ha is fearful of water. You know what I'm saying? But yet y'all live on the beach. Like, does it make sense? You feel what I'm saying? Like you could even see the control there. But anyway, um, so he tells him that, you know, she almost drowned as a ch child, but he said that, you know, he likes to at least go out for, like, you know, once every season. So he likes to do it once. And my thing is, if you like, um, if you like doing something, why should you have to stop because you got a partner or because your partner don't like it? When you think that, when you spending time with yourself, like, because even if you in a relationship, like, right, you still have time when you spend time to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's going to the mall, going shopping, or going for walks, or, like, you know, doing things on your own. I mean, what's wrong with that? Because if, if you have a, a spouse who likes the boat and you don't like to be near water, you would want him to do that on his own time. Like, you know, all right, go, go selling. Get out my face. You feel me? But anywho, so he tells him, like, you know, I you know, I used to like doing it or whatever, but my wife, you know, whatever he disclosed to, to him, uh, he's saying, oh, I like to do it, like, at least once a season. And, you know, then John invited him uh, to go selling with him that evening. He like, yo, I'm going to be going out this evening. You and your wife could come. The weather's going to be nice, you know. Uh and, you know, Martin with his fake self, like, oh, yeah, okay, that's that would be great, you know, fronting. Because, <coughs> you know, he's jealous, you know. Some man can't take another man, you know, inviting him and his wife or, you know, they, whatever. But anyway, so... So Martin, you know, he was being fake, like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, raise the question to her ex or whatever. So meanwhile, all this time, you know, she's just in the house, you know, just arranging like flowers. You know, she don't, she don't have no idea her husband spoke to this random guy, supposedly, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, this random guy on the street or whatever, I mean, not on the street, but by the dock, you feel what I'm saying, like, by his boat, she don't know nothing that has been transpiring, like, she in the house arranging flowers, minding her own business, you know, and, you know, he coming there, and, like, uh, accuses her of knowing John, but he, he calls John a doctor, he like, oh, uh, you know, you let that man enter our home. And she like, I don't know no doctor. You know what I'm saying? He said, Oh, you let that doctor into the home. And she's sitting there like, you know, I don't I don't know no doctor. You know what I'm saying? He he kept he saying, Oh, you've been staring at him from the window. 
And mind you, the guy didn't even say that she was staring at him. She said he said he said that she was staring out of the window. She could have been staring out of the window, looking a totally different direction. But he, in his mind, it's like yo, you've been staring at that guy. You've been staring at him. You know what I'm saying? And from, you know, he said, "Oh, you've been staring at him from the window." And so, like, she's still looking, like, confused, like, but what's going on here? Like, you know, of course she knows what's going to happen, you know. These are the things that she avoids, like, her whole daily routine, like, the way stuff is set up and stuff. But this right here is something that she can't avoid. Like, then he attacks her, you know. I'm not going to go into detail as to what he does or whatever, but, you know, and then after that, he act like nothing didn't happen and invite her to go selling with, with, you know, with that, with the Dr. John, the new, new neighbor or whatever. But it's like, when you think about aspects of things like that, it's like, you don't know what's going to trigger a, um trigger attack like this when you're dealing with a spouse that wants to have control and power and domination right although you could be doing everything right inside the home it could be something you know you don't have no control over what someone else is going to do you feel what i'm saying like you know she uh <clears throat> set up her daily routine to kind of like avoid <clears throat> these attacks and look at she couldn't even avoid it i mean you know it, it was severe but um so she goes to like uh on the beach she goes to the beach because like i said they they home is right in front of a beach like either like they surrounded by the beach <clears throat> So she kind of like goes, stands there by the water and she looks, you know, like she she's in a deep ponder, like she's thinking very deeply um, to herself. And she's just like, you know, like a lot of women who, you know, endure those things, just thinking like, damn, like this shit just happened. You know, I try to avoid all this stuff and it's it keeps happening. It's like, it's no matter what I do, it's, you know, this guy's going to get at me. Like, straight like that, you know? And she just looked like she's in deep ponder or whatever. And um, then she kind of, like, turns around or whatever. And so they have, like, these street lights um, around the home. And she uh, knocks one of the, she takes a rock and she throws it to the, um, to the light bulb, like, you know, to knock it out. And so, like, she goes back into the home and, you know, he brings her, like, you know, flowers and, you know, saying he's sorry, uh, you know, give her a sorry gift. And he brought her, you know, a red dress and told her that, you know, he likes to see her, you know, in it right <clears throat> you know well he didn't say he liked to see it in it but you know he gave it to her she said she liked it but clearly it's a red dress like you know what i'm saying clearly she don't like that style like you know what i'm saying he be having her look crazy well not crazy but like the the stuff he be wearing i mean he want her to wear it just look that shit look whack So, he he brought her a dress that he wanted to see her in. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it was more so, you know, like, oh, yeah, I want to see you in this dress, you know, for his pleasure, right? So, he kind of, like, you know, put the dress on her and stuff like that. And, uh, you know... And it's not, it's like... That's what, uh, you know, a lot of guys, well, not a lot of guys, abusive men, 
You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to. Because like I said, that type of dynamic is. Uh, that type of dynamic is. It's, it's all about con, um, power and control. So it's not like so much of a. Because anyone. Like when you think about relationships, it could be anybody. You know, some some people are in same sex relationship, and one of the partners is you know trying to control and tell the spouse you know what to do. You know, and it's more so like they get off to the power and control that they think they have within a relationship. And so he feels as though, like, oh, I'm giving you a present. I'm giving you roses. You should, you know, automatically, you know, forgive me and stuff like that, you know. And, you know, he has her to put that dress on, and he proceeds to R, you know. I'm not going to go deeply into that. If you guys are interested in seeing the movie, the movie that I'm discussing is called Sleeping with the Enemy. It's a movie that came out in 1991. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, with that, after that, you know, um, they are uh, at the dinner table. And so, uh, she asks him... Because she start like, uh, working full-time instead of working part-time because she, uh, you know, told him that, you know, she was working at the bookstore, not bookstore, the library. So she, you know, has a job, you know, working at the library. And so she want to, um, she want to work full-time, but, you know, he tells her like, you know, uh, he tell he tells her that you know uh wait hold on I, I this part hold on let me see uh, so she tries to convince him like uh, to let her work full time at instead of part time and she like oh well your dinner has never been late one time. You know what I'm saying? And then he says, oh, well, you know, uh, six months ago, it was late twice. And she tries to tell him, like, you know, my mom's died. So that's why. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't even attend the funeral. You feel what I'm saying? So they kind of get into, like, a back and forth thing. But it's, like, not arguing. It's, like, they talking calmly and stuff like that. And he tells her, like, oh, he thinks that she's trying to provoke an argument so that she won't sell that night because clearly it's still that the same day where you know he met the guy john who invited them to like you know sell later on so they eating dinner whatever before going out selling you know what i'm saying so everything is just one day on this at least this part or whatever <laughs> So, um, so they go out selling, and so the weather is not good. The weather ain't, like, nice the way that John person, <laughs> that John character was like, oh, the weather's going to be nice. No, the weather was bad. It was a horrible storm, you know, and they on, like, a little boat. It's, they not on no huge boat. They on a little boat, like, with the little, uh, the flag thing, right? So both of the men was on the other end. Because mind you, right? His wife, Laura, what he thinks. This is what he thinks, right? Uh, and what's being shown into the movie now is that, you know, she's fearful of water. Right, because she drowned as a young child, so she has on like you know a life uh, a lifesaver jacket, you know, or a vest. I don't know what they call them now, but we're gonna call it that. So uh, she's on a boat on one end, right? So they was all you know sitting there, whatever. But then when a, they started losing control of the boat, they had to do something like with the flag, the the thing, you know that. 
helps the boat to sell. So they both over there trying to fix the flag. And so while they focusing on them fixing the flag, she falls in the water, but they we never see see her fall in the water. We just see uh, you know, John and Martin, you know, trying to fix the flag so they could gain control over the boat. And so I guess John he fell in the water and um Martin gets him out of the water. But when he gets him out of the water, he notices that his wife is missing. And so he's he's bugging out because in his mind he like, yo, my wife can't swim, you know, and all this stuff. So in his mind he thinking like, oh, she fell in the water. She's probably drowning because as a kid, you know. And and that's another thing. It's like, you know your spouse don't like water and stuff like that or like these things. Why would you even suffer your wife or your partner to do something that they don't want to do for your enjoyment? You feel what I'm saying? Like those things, like if someone comes to you and say, yo, I want to face my fear. I want to, you know, do this. And they're a willing participant. But why is it that, you know, you have someone who's going to sit there and tell you what they want you to do and they want you to conquer your fear or to do something that, you know, you don't want to do? You know what I'm saying? So it's like she never challenged him like, oh, I don't want to do this or anything like that because she knew by challenging him it was going to, uh, you know, it's going, it was going to be another attack. You know what I'm saying? It was going to be another attack. So, you know, to avoid that, she just, you know, went along with it. Because he's been doing this for quite some time. Like, she studied him. And so, like, you know, the movie's going to turn around. But I just have to highlight certain parts or whatever. And so, like, once he notices that she's going, he's losing his mind because he's thinking, like, all right, she can't swim. We in all this water, <coughs> you know. So then it switched to a scene where they, like, are, uh, they got, a, like, a rescue team and all these people that's looking for her, right? So then they find, um, they find her, um, her lifesaver's jacket. And so when he when he saw that, like he lost it, like he knew, like all right, she's dead because there's no way she was going to uh, survive without that lifesaver jacket on. Because you know when you have your lifesaver jacket on, that's what's keeping you floating to the top. So he like already like yo, it's a dub, like it's 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 a done deal, like she's gone. You know what I'm saying? So he goes home looking all sad, like he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't uh, treating his wife the way he was treating her. Like, he was the victim. You know what I'm saying? So, he started a typical abusive person, you know, want to break up all their stuff in the house or whatever. But he broke the when he, he threw something through the window, right? And, of course, they, you know, go to the scene where it's like a... Um, you know, they go to, like, the funeral and stuff like that. And, you know, he looking all sad and... Um, you know, so he, he, in his mind, he think his wife is gone. So this is where things kind of switch, right? Cause that's just like the first, like 30 minutes of the movie or whatever. And it's just like, it just highlights, you know, what she had to endure on a small scale. You feel what I'm saying? Cause even, even when you have to walk on eggshells in your own home, that's an issue, B. Like, when you got to be just uh, catering towards a spouse or bowing down to a spouse that don't, like, they want all the control. They want the house to be this kind of way. They want to give you this kind of money. They want to they wanna limit everything, right? So she knew this, but now they show uh, the movie from her perspective, right? And she did not die. She didn't die. She was freeing herself from her abusive spouse. Like, she was freeing herself from him, like, straight up and down. Like, she realized at some point in that relationship that, you know, this ain't, this ain't what I want. This ain't what I want, right? So, that's why 
the movie title is so important, right? Because it's like sleeping with the enemy. She realized he was the enemy. She realized he was the enemy. You know what I'm saying? But she went about it in a strategic way because it's like she knew what, what she was dealing with. And a lot of times, you know, uh, people don't know who they're dealing with. They be in relationships blindly, not being observant of what's going on or the interactions that are happening. It's like, oh, okay, well, this happened. You know, this incident happened. And it's like, you know, you're not taking from it. You're not learning from it or, you know, or... You still just being naive to the situation. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like at the end of the day, I always advocate for people to, you know, leave. You know what I'm saying? I always advocate for people to leave. But, you know, for whatever reasons, people stay or they, you know, they let stuff build up. Well, not build up, but they go about it in a different manner. You know what I'm saying? They go about it in a different manner. But luckily in this movie, this woman was able to, you know, safely, uh, you know, get away from, you know, her abusive spouse. Because uh, we all know, like based off of, uh, you know, factual like statistics and uh you know, even when you look on the news and stuff in different areas of the world, uh, domestic violence is very serious, and it does happen. You feel what I'm saying? It, it does happen within the home. Um, and a lot of times people feel as though because they're not talking about it, right, because you're not talking about what you're experiencing behind closed doors, it doesn't make it a, a reality. It doesn't make it real, or they try to, like, lie to themselves, right? You know, because there's a lot of people out there that's not going to openly say, oh, well, my spouse abuses me or my spouse doesn't financially abuses me. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's not even giving me, like, we had an agreement where, you know, I'm going to stay at home. Um, I stay at home. You know, I'm the homemaker, and he provides the money. You feel what I'm saying? And that's the type of agreement that they they on and then you supposed to give me a certain amount of money you know what i'm saying to deal with what i what i need to do in a home or whatever and then now all of a sudden you switch up you don't want to give me the money you feel what i'm saying and you using the money to spend it somewhere else you feel what i'm saying so it, it, it's a it's a lot uh you know that some people have endured like some people keep things to themselves and other people are very vocal so it's like judging a situation that you don't know that's why I like I don't really people be liars a lot of people be fake I, I, I as I get older I just realize that like you know it's and we're not talking about faking it till you till you make it type of shit like some whole they whole being is fake but anywho, so getting back to this movie, right? So now it's like we get to see it from her perspective, right? Because uh, so she learned how to swim. So he thought she couldn't, could not swim, right? She, he thought that she couldn't swim, but, but she faced her fear. She faced, she had to face her fear. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, all right, you know, like when you, like, let's say if you're a little kid, right, and you get attacked by a dog, right, and when you get older, become an adult, you know, you let's say you forget about that attack or maybe you remember the attack. Either way, some people, when they are attacked by a dog or have a temp attack, like, you know how when you walk around some dogs, they be trying to bark, and they always be like the small dogs, too. It's like the small dogs be just barking all the damn time. You feel me? So it's like, you know, even if you have that experience, you little, you know, you become an adult. Somehow you don't even like dogs. You don't want to be around dogs. You fearful of dogs because of that one interaction, right? But there's some people out there who had like those reactions as children and they was able to come to uh, face their fear 
and see that all dogs are not like that. You feel what I'm saying? That all dogs are not aggressive, that dogs could actually be, you know what I'm saying, your best friend or, you know, they could be a, comp- uh, what do they call the dogs? Uh, do you know the pets they have? Uh, hmm, emotional support. You know what I'm saying? Dogs are just animals now. Cats and dogs, they just, they forced to be emotional support. Uh, <laughs> like, they don't even have a choice. But, you know what I'm saying? But uh, for those people who faced those kind of fears and was able to change their mind about their fears. And, you know, because uh, there's a lot of people out there who, can say that yo when I was young I went through this with had an experience with a dog but now I have like two dogs you know I have one dog and some people you know they love pets they got cats and dogs and lizards and snakes and all like their whole house be just straight with animals and stuff like that but anyway so she had to face her fear and she learned to swim of course she didn't let him know that she was learning how to swim or none, none of that stuff because remember he's the enemy he don't want nothing good for her he want he want her solely for his purpose and that's what she's seen that's what she noticed that's what uh you know those experiences it would ne- it was never getting better it was never going to get better he was never going to stop uh you know attacking her you feel what i'm saying because that's who he is you know what I'm saying? And she uh, she knew that he was controlling, so he had all the power. So he made it, so um, he had all the power, right? And so he made all the decisions. And so living on that beach was his decisions. I don't think they got that home. You feel what I'm saying? Because she had a role in uh into uh wherever they lived at. You know what I'm saying? She didn't she didn't have a role in knowing exactly where they was gonna live at. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, uh if you saw the movie, you noticed that he made all of the decisions. You feel what I'm saying? He made all the decisions. She didn't make the decision. And to have your wife live surrounded by water and knowing that, you know, she's fearful of water, that she don't even like being on water, and that she almost drowned as a child, it's like you utilizing that to control her. You feel what I'm saying? You utilizing that to control her. So in her mind, she knew that, you know, she had to face her fear. She knew that in order to get away from him, you know, uh, she would have to face her fear. And facing her fear meant learning how to swim. Learning how to swim. And without him knowing it. So it's like a lot of times, you know, when people are in relationships with like these kind of um, partners who are like abusive and want power and control it's like you know a lot of times they submit to that person and telling them all their business like oh he gotta know this and he gotta know that you know I gotta let him know everything I gotta let him know what I'm thinking I gotta you ain't gotta let him know nothing straight like that you ain't got to let this man know nothing he don't need to know nothing about you he don't he don't need to know what you're doing You know, like, if she was the type of person that, if she would have told him that, oh, I'm going to take swimming classes or, you know, then that night he wouldn't have, he would have been like, oh, well, she could swim. She could have, she could have survived that or, you know what I'm saying? Or he probably would have talked her out of it. You know what I'm saying? But anyway... So it goes on to show as to why she broke that light. Because, you know, early on I told you, you know, when she went out after he physically assaulted her and she was in deep ponder and she broke that light, right? So the reason why she broke that light is when she swam back to shore because, you know, her um her house is right by the beginning of the beach. And so, so she could know where to go. So that 
one area where the darkness was was an indication of the home because remember she's on a time a time restraint you know what i'm saying because before he realizes that she's uh she's gone so remember they're in the middle of the ocean well yeah they're in the middle of the a mass thing of water and she had to swim back to shore they probably wasn't too far from it or whatever like you know the beginning of the beach or whatever and so you know uh she had to run back to the home um to get her belongings so she was she so she needed that light to be out so she could be like all right that's where my home is at because you have all these lights around and that one light is broke you feel what I'm saying? And so she ran back there. You know, she got the bag. She had money in the bag. You know, all her information and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, she cut her hair. Uh, she uh, um, she cut her hair. And then she um, put a wig on. Because, you know, you put on a wig, you look like a whole different person. She put on one of them little cheap wigs. You feel what I'm saying? Like they... <laughs> Like, it costs like $20, like them little cheap bob wigs with the bang. So she threw that on. And, you know, she uh, changed her clothes, put her clothes on and stuff like that. And she took off her, um, her wedding ring. And, of course, she threw it out. But she made the mistake of putting it in the toilet and flushing it like who first of all why would a ring flush that's the thing because it's like it's heavy like when you think about tissue and stuff it's just gonna go to the bottom and sit there so she puts that in a uh, toilet flush and then she like goes to like the Greyhound like goes to like I guess the bus station and she gets on like the Greyhound bus and so she totally like yo she free like she's on the bus going to like the next town or wherever she's going because you know the greyhound bus go everywhere it goes everywhere and back in the days i ain't even gonna hold you like the greyhound bus used to be the most uncomfortable ride ever now they have like luxury buses where it's like spacious but i don't think that's something like the greyhound bus has but she gets on a greyhound bus or you know and she starts talking to, you know, a older lady. Like, the lady just randomly, you know, gives her apple. I don't know, like, who on the bus. Like, because when, when I get be on the Greyhound bus, you know, I mean, well, people do start conversations. You feel what I'm saying? And any conversation, anything could, uh, you know, trigger a conversation. Like, you want to, the, the, the driver could be driving crazy and y'all could could start talking like them while he slow down you feel what i'm saying that could trigger a conversation but she was like sleeping or looking or whatever out the window and then the lady who's sitting on the next um directly across from her on the next um the next row um just randomly asked her like oh here you want an apple here go an apple and i'm like who does that <laughs> <coughs> that was kind of like weird to me like somebody just randomly like, oh, here you go. Here here goes the apple. But anyway, the lady gives her, you know, an apple and stuff like that. And somehow she talks about some random woman like, you know, leave, leaving her, you know, abusive spouse. You know what I'm saying? She was like indirectly telling her her story. You know what I'm saying? And she basically stated that, you know, uh, the abuse started with him after the honeymoon so after the honeymoon you feel what i'm saying like that's when he started uh becoming abusive and stuff like that of course they have like she go deeper into stuff but the older lady is like i'm just summarizing it i'm summarizing it you know you guys are more than welcome to actually watch it this the movie is sleeping with the enemy um a movie that came out in 1991 uh, so basically, uh, you know, she tells her that, you know, the abuse started after the honeymoon and, you know, the older woman, like, uh, well, he told, and, oh yeah, that's what he said. He said, she's, uh, so she basically told the older woman 
that the abuse started after the honeymoon and that he told her that he would punish her if she decided to leave, right? And so uh, the older woman, she realized that, you know, uh, that Laura was talking about herself and she said, you know, uh, she said, well, how long did you stay? She asked her, because, you know, it's some older woman out there who has wisdom. Like, they could just see through the BS. Like, you talking to them, and they just see through the whole thing. You feel what I'm saying? Like, all right, girl, we, we already know you talking about yourself. Like, we're not even going to do this indirect stuff. Now nah, we ain't doing that. So she asked her, like, you know, how long or whatever you stayed. And she was like, you know, I was there three years, seven months, and six days. You know what I'm saying? Like, typically, you know, when you ask somebody how long they've been in a relationship, they just say the years. Like, yeah, I've been with him for seven years. Yo, she said it like she was in a correctional facility. Like, she was in a prison. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, she said it like she was doing time. <coughs> So she said that, like, she was doing time. Like, it wasn't even, like, it's a marriage. It's like, yo. So he had his best face forward. He was being a fake dude. And a lot of times, you know, people would mask who they are and so they could actually get you. You feel what I'm saying? In this case, she said the abuse started after their honeymoon. So it was like, you already married. You already know what this guy is like to give you whatever it is, like, to treat you good or to financially be there like you know he presented a different person like she was under this this uh idea that he was someone else but then come to find out he was just abusive and controlling and wanted her to do exactly what it is that you know he wanted her to do right and so she realized that but you know unfortunately she was with him three years seven months and six days because i just feel like once you really realize that someone is like that you should just leave immediately because it's like it doesn't even matter how long it's going to take for them to attack you again it's going to happen it is it's going to happen happen that's just my opinion on that and that's the data shows that <clears throat> But even with her, it's like she knew she had to, like, you know, fake her own death. You know what I'm saying? To get away. But, you know, now, right, because this, this setting was, uh, first of all, this is a movie that I'm talking about uh, that came out in 1991. And it's still, I feel like it's still relevant because there's a lot of women out there or a lot of people out there who are experiencing, experiencing this. You feel what I'm saying? So the the movie came out in 1991, but the book came out in 1987. You feel what I'm saying? So this is definitely a old movie. I mean, that's uh, it's from a novel or whatever. But when you think about like certain laws, like with domestic violence, like it was different back then. You feel what I'm saying? Like it was a it it, it was different right but now it's like there's certain depending on where you at right because there's different um you know uh countries and all that stuff and they have different um uh laws and rules and you know stuff like that they do you know so but uh for some now there's organizations that are set up to help you know uh, women to lead these situations, right? So it's like they have, uh, you know, uh, the domestic violence hotline number that's national. Like you could Google domestic hotline number and uh, it will come up, you know, and everything else. Like you call them and let them know and then they will, you know, uh, connect you with different services or resources in your, um, wherever you are at, you know what I'm saying? Cause when you are leaving an abusive relationship, you don't want to tell this person where you are at, or even people that even friends and family, like, I just feel like, because you just never know 
who is going to say something to this person. You feel what I'm saying? And if you have the resources to just bounce on your own and go get a new apartment or go get your own house or go live in a hotel, I would say do it. I would say leave because it's not going to get better. It's not. Like, an abusive relationship does not get better. It doesn't. Like, you could you could lie to yourself, right? That's what a lot of, you know, women have done or uh, blinded themselves to certain aspects, but it's not going to get better. And when you do decide to, you know, leave an abusive relationship, you have to be very serious because that's when it becomes a high... Uh, chance of this person, you know, killing you straight up and down. Like people, like when you look at statistics and stuff like that, um, they always say like, you know, women are at a higher risk when they leave of being, you know, killed by their they spouse, they abusive spouse. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, when you do decide to uh, stay away, stay away, like leave, even change. You got to change everything. Like people just feel like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to get me an order of protection and I'm still going to live in the same house that I was living in and I'm still going to go to the same job that I've been going to. And it's like, no, you have to literally, like when you're dealing with someone who <clears throat> they don't want to let you go, they start to become like a stalker. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why is you, like, we already, we broken up. So why are you coming to my house? Like, why is you calling me? Like, if if you solidify with somebody, like, yo, it's over, we done. It's a wrap. I don't care. You feel what I'm saying? Then that's something that you have to definitely, you know, take serious and, you know, go somewhere. That's why they have domestic violence shelters. You know what I'm saying? These safe haven places because it was a time when they didn't have those things. And women was just, you know, dying or ended up in prison because they killed their spouse. How many women right now are in jail for self-defense because they killed, cause, because it got so bad that, you know, they was just defending themselves. You feel what I'm saying? And then also, like, People don't want to talk about, like, you know, the control. Like, if you have someone that has control over your mind, they have control over you, period. And they can get you to do anything. And that's why you see a lot of women out there who, you know, who have uh, led to a life of crime because they chose this particular spouse who was getting them to do any and everything. You know what I'm saying? Who was getting them to commit these crimes, now, you know, I don't have to bring up particular scenarios. Listen, you could go on Google and see news uh, news clips all day long about this stuff. So it's much deeper, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people be having certain belief systems that keeps them in these relationships that are just not good. You know what I'm saying? Like certain religious views, too, like because sometimes... Uh, People feel like, or, you know, it could be people feel like, and, you know, some people have um, religious views or traditional views or, you know, culturally that, you know, a woman should only be with, with one man and be married one time and stay with that person forever. You know what I'm saying? Or they always have certain movies or certain, like, uh, certain certain movies when you think about like it as as a whole like collectively like as society always make uh you know women feel like oh yeah you're just waiting for your knight in shining armor he's going to sweep you off your feet and then you guys are going to live happily ever after and that's going to be the guy you're going to be with forever and listen it's not like that you know what i'm saying it's not like that because you know uh Instead of thinking like, oh, unconditional, like, oh, yeah, you can give this person unconditional love. No, it, it has to be conditions to certain things. And I, I think that, you know, when somebody is physically abusing you, beating you up, you know, breaking your, fracturing your bones, you feel what I'm saying? 
uh, punching you. You know, you got, well, let me, uh, let me not do, uh, talk about like the physical, like, let me stay away from descriptive talk because I don't know how this YouTube thing is, but you guys get the drift of um, what I, I'm talking about. So, uh, yeah, you know, so I guess I could talk about this. Let me, okay, let me just do this, go over, because this is thing is called power and control and it's like the will so it's physical violence and sexual so these are this this is how the will goes if i wasn't i could have uh did like a screen share but uh, listen i ain't got time for that like this is a one woman show okay like that that all that technical stuff like listen at this point, this is a hobby, son. And you feel what I'm saying? I enjoy talking and, and talking about topics and all that stuff. But listen, this technical stuff and putting this stuff on the screen. Like back in the days, I used to break down all this stuff, like put the pictures up and stuff. But I guess I'm just going to talk about uh, uh, the power and control well. So basically, like, so... The power and control will. So it just has, it highlights what your abusive spouse can do to, you know, utilize, uh, <clears throat> to exercise like power and control, right? So they do, they use intimidation, making her feel afraid by using looks actions gestures smashing things destroying her property abusing pets displaying weapons they use emotional abuse by putting her down making her feel bad about herself calling her names making her think she's crazy playing mind games humili humiliating her making her feel guilty right so this is how you know like the power and control these are the things that you know abusive men do domestic violence relationships are you know what i'm saying this is what the spouse does right he he uses out isolation so using isolation right controlling what she does who she sees and talks to what she reads where she goes limiting her outside involvement using jealousy to justify actions right another thing that an abusive person will do minimizing denying and blaming making light of the abuse and not taking her concerns about it seriously you know saying the abuse didn't happen shifting responsibility for abusive behavior saying oh yeah she caused it right another thing is using coercion and threats making and carrying out threats uh to do something to hurt her Lim threatening to leave her to commit suicide you know them guys out there like when you when you realize like yo this is an abusive relationship i'm not going to deal with this guy like it's a dub it's a rap it's over like if you tell your spouse like look it's over i don't want to be with you and then he'd be like oh i'm gonna kill myself i'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna you know uh you know uh i'm gonna do this i'm not gonna you know I, I, I promise, I promise, I, I just want to be with you, you know. They start crying and stuff, and it's like, who are you? How many personalities these abusive people got? You know what I'm saying? Like, one minute they they beating you up, treating you like you ain't nothing, and then the next minute when you decide to leave them because of the way they acting, they want to... Uh, cry like oh i'm gonna hurt myself i'm gonna do this listen what you do is you call uh emergency services and call ems and you know what i'm saying send an ems so he could go to uh you know uh have a 24-hour hold for a uh mental uh uh what is it called mental health evaluation okay that's what you do because at the end of the day if you decide to leave what that person says or do is none of your concern. It doesn't matter. 
You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, they 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 will say all this stuff to keep you to stay, right? So anyway, using coercion and threats, like I said, to commit suicide, to report her to welfare, making her drop charges, making her do illegal things, you know? Uh, exactly. Like a lot of people in relationships, like I was saying, and if, if you guys are just tuning in, I'm talking about the... The will is this power and control will and, you know, that abusive men utilizes um, to abuse. Well, they don't utilize, well, it, it's highlighting how uh, abusive spouse uh, abuses they, the things that they utilize to abuse. They either physically abuse uh you know, it could be other things financially, sexually, you know, it's violence, right? So, uh, you know, your abusive spouse using economic abuse, what I was talking about, preventing her from getting or keeping a job, making her ask for money, giving her an allowance, taking her money. Yep, everybody, see, people don't even want to talk about the fact that there's abusive men out there who are in relationships and they not working. They ain't doing nothing but playing video games all day or trying to get some, you know, trying to hook up with somebody else. You feel what I'm saying? Like a lot of times people think abusive men are, you know, men that are just strictly in power uh, and hold power positions. Right. But nobody never want to talk about the abusive men that living in the shelter with their spouse. You know what I'm saying? You got this, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or living with their girlfriend or they aunt on a or their wife. You know, uh, they probably had a job for like five minutes, and then, you know, now they don't have no job, and they haven't had a job for probably twenty years. But they keep talking about that one little construction job or that one job that they had at the movies. But bro, bro, that was like. In the early 2000s, like, it's it's like 2024, like, what, what are we doing here, right? But, and, you know, they taking their girlfriend money, right? See, a lot of times, you know, like, with this movie, right, that I was talking about um, sleeping with the enemy. So, you have, like, this woman who, you know, who's being financially supported uh, by her man and, he giving her stuff and, you know, bought her a house probably. You know, he financially take care of all that stuff, right? And it comes with, like, some t type of control. Because, like she said, you know, after the honeymoon, he became, he started becoming abusive. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, how does that translate to someone who, you know, they, they haven't never been taken care of by their spouse. Like, there's some woman out there that could say, like, yo, Every relationship that I've been in, you know, I've always, you know, had the job, but this guy was on some broke, broke shit. You feel me? Like, he never had no job, like, or he was always in between jobs and I had to, like, you know, pay the rent or, you know, whatever. It That's woman experiences, too. Like, I, you know, that's just what it is. Like, I'm not going sugarcoat nothing. And within those relationships, too, even though you would say to yourself, like, oh, whoever makes the money has the control and a, and a power in a relationship. That's what people feel like, too. Like, you know, uh, but we're not talking about that aspect because there's, like I said, power and control. It doesn't even mean like, oh, it's a feminine, masculine thing and only men are, you know, like this. You know, it could be any person like any woman or man that could be abusive and use something against their spouse you know what I'm saying like there are some women out there who uses money against men like right but we're not talking about that we're talking about how you know your spouse they broke as hell but yet they controlling your money they telling you what to do with your money when you get your check they go right to the bank and take your money out and spend your money to do whatever it is that they want to do. They taking your money or they asking you to ask relatives and family members for money so that they could do whatever it is that they want to do. 
You know what I'm saying? They so broke that they counting pennies and going to the store to get a Dutch so they could smoke some weed. But back, you know, they don't even use Dutches no more. What people use papers. You know what I'm saying? That shit is crazy. Like if you can't even get a a, a paper roller to to roll your joint, then brother, you need to you need to f- make some serious uh uh different choices. You got to make some different choices, but you know what I'm saying. So that's what some of these guys are doing. You know. So, but a lot of times women ain't gonna talk about that. Some women are very transparent about uh, their experiences, but, you know, it does happen. So on this um, this world that I'm looking at, and you guys are more than welcome to Google the power and control world because that's what I was talking from, and I was talking about how the abusive men using econ- economic abuse, how economic abuse is utilized, right, from an abuser. Abuser, like I said, taking her money. That's what it says on here, taking her money, not letting her know about or have access to family income. You know what I'm saying? Like he he basically, like let's say if you guys got money, right, or whatever, but he can control the debit card, you know what I'm saying, or how much he gives out and all that stuff. That's that's ridiculous, you know what I'm saying? Anywho, so using male privilege, treating her like a servant, making all the big decisions, acting like the master of the castle, being the one to uh, def- define men's and women's roles, right? And then also using children. Using children, making her feel guilty about the children, using the children to relay messages, using uh, visitation to harass her, threaten, threatening, uh, you know, threatening to take the children away. So that's basically the power and control will. You guys could definitely uh, go uh, look that up and see <clears throat> what I'm talking about. Because a lot of times people, like, I, I spoke about different things on as well, and some people are experiencing that, and they don't know that they are in an abusive relationship. They still would never say, oh, well, this is an abusive relationship because they are, you know, in denial. You feel me? they in denial. So getting back to the movie, so... uh so basically she was with this guy three years seven months and six days you know obviously she had a strategic plan on how to get out of the relationship right she tried her best to you know uh pretend as long as she could pretend you feel what i'm saying because that's what she did like once you realize these things right and she it's like she said to herself like okay well i have to leave in a certain way because he said that you know if i leave you know he was going to punish her remember she said that like if 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 she if the woman because remember he she was on a bus with the guy the woman the older woman who was like yo uh you know because she was trying to talk about it in an indirect way like tell her her story but trying to pretend like it was somebody else's so she was like you know um he told her if she would leave he would punish her right so that probably stayed at the back of her head like damn he could possibly kill me so she knew she had to totally disappear so she was strategically you know planning so that and then also Right, uh, so she was strategically planning and avoiding the attacks, but it's like I said, it's difficult to avoid attacks, like you just don't know what's going to trip somebody out. But she goes on, um, uh, to a different town, she starts a new life, um. You know, she starts her new life. Um, it's a beautiful home. She changes her name. Her name is Sarah. Um, you know, she she's low key. Like she, uh, listen. <clears throat> she changed her name. Everything going on about her life, but also like 
um in a scene where she kind of like you know in the shower and she gets out the shower and she notices the towels now when she was living with her husband or whatever he was so like obsessive of, about how the towels should be you know what i'm saying and so she found herself organizing the towels like in a in a certain way like oh let me organize them you know she was about to organize them the way he want, used to want her to do it. Then she caught herself, right? Because it's like subconsciously that's what she has been, you know, programmed to uh, how she's been programmed by her husband to keep the towels a certain way, right? So she had to immediately disregard that and she kind of just put all the towels on top of each other. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, when it came to, like, the cabinets, she just threw her stuff in there however she wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? So she she knew that that wasn't her. I um that She knew that that didn't come from her. And that's very um important to understand where certain things are coming from, right? Because, like, when you have been in a long time of relationship, abusive relationship with somebody... It's like, you know, certain things you will find yourself doing. You know what I'm saying? And you have to immediately recognize that and eliminate it. Because this person no longer has control over you, no longer has power over you. Because a lot of times people will leave abusive relationships, but mentally they haven't left. You know what I'm saying? Mentally, this person is low-key controlling the person because it's like think about the fact that if she would have got out the shower and just lined up the towels the way that he want the towels to be lined up then it's like <clears throat> he low-key is controlling her you know what i'm saying but <clears throat> she um eliminated that she eliminated that so but getting into uh that aspect of like uh dealing with your mind and really uh going into reprogramming your mind or you know because it's all about your mind you know what i'm saying because if she never really came to the conclusion or made the decision to leave her um abusive husband then she would have still been there, right? So uh, I'm going to suggest a book for you guys. It's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind, and it's by Joseph Mercy, Murphy. Joseph Murphy. So it's really about um, eliminating um, certain things within your subconscious mind because your subconscious mind is really what's controlling stuff, right? A lot of times people think it's really your conscious mind but your conscious mind is really programming your subconscious mind right but your subconscious mind can also be programmed by other people and it's like you know <clears throat> that's why people are able to do certain things like uh, when they make decisions like if you decide to uh, change up your routine right you know, and you uh, do this routine over and over again. It's like you becoming repetition. Rep it's becoming a repetition for you. Like you're repeating the same thing over and over again, right? And so your mind is going to, you know, pick that up. And it's like you're not going to have to tell yourself to do these things. You're going to just automatically do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because sometimes when you're trying to change a habit, you got to keep reminding yourself of doing it. You feel what I'm saying? Like, if you have someone who say to themselves, like, yo, I'm going to lose weight, right? So, with losing weight comes with eating healthy, right? And sometimes you're, you could be um, craving or thinking about other foods, and you got to kind of, like, um, get in the habit of eating other foods first, right? So it's like you get in the habit of having uh, this meal, right? But you're still going to be craving other stuff or thinking about other, other meals, right? But then after a certain period of time, 
you're going to start craving or wanting or thinking about the healthy foods, right? But that takes time. But anyway, you guys could delve more deeply into that book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy. And kind of like if you guys are interested in really changing your mind, you know what I'm saying? And working on your mind, right? So getting back to this, um... So, um, yeah, so basically she, you know, she identified basically what, um, what was her way of being, how she wanted to live now versus how he wanted her to live. Like, it's like, listen, I'm gonna, like my, um, my cabinet is going to look how it's going to look. You ain't you ain't got nothing to do with my cabinet. You know, <laughs> it's going to be messy. You know what I'm saying? Like, however that is. That's why when you have... But anyway, I'm not going to um, get too much off of the topic because this, this live just is long. <laughs> so, basically, so she's building her life, you know, um, living her life, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, she got out this abusive relationship and she's... She's working on herself. You know what I'm saying? Living her life. And meanwhile, while she's living her life and doing her, the guy Martin, like, he's, you know, moving on, uh, going about his life, right? So in this particular scene, he's like, yo, he's, um, he's, uh, you know, at work and he receives a phone call or whatever and it's from the woman from like the center that Laura got swimming lessons from and so she like just calling him you know to send her condolences and he like who is this like she he's thinking like all right my wife never don't know how to swim so like what are you talking about here like he's very confused he like yo telling her like yo you got the wrong person and she's like very like well I don't want to she she's saying well you know your wife you know she did come here a few times out of the week to learn to swim at first she didn't know how to swim but then she became an excellent swimmer you know explaining those kind of things and then he she said that oh your your wife she studied gymnastic and he like nah she ain't do that no and then he was about to hang up the phone like listen you got the wrong person and then when she said oh well she said that she took gymnastics and that's why she had all those bruises on her body and when she said that he lost it because he knew that you know he knew that she was talking about his wife because he abused her you feel what i'm saying so that's definitely like you know <clears throat> a, a, a tell all right so he breaks the phone and then it goes uh to him going to the home and he he already packed up the house everything kind of like covered and you know under sheets and stuff like that and so he kind of like <clears throat> going through all her stuff and it's crazy how like you still got her stuff she's gone but you still got her stuff in the house so um he going through everything you know trying to find some stuff or whatever and he goes in the bathroom or whatever somehow he's like leaning over the toilet and then he sees uh you know the wedding ring that she kind of like she thought she flushed down the toilet and so that's when he knew like yo she alive because she had on her wedding ring you know what i'm saying at that uh that boat ride you feel me so of course he gonna put like two and two together like yo uh she she faked her death so he goes on like to this like investigation type of thing finding out stuff but my thing is right <clears throat> like i understand like the woman i feel like if she never even interview if she never intro if you don't get introduced to somebody family or husband right how do you randomly just call a job like oh let me just look in a yellow page well they don't have yellow pages now but who does that <clears throat> like i don't i don't see that happening in this day and age you feel me 
but you know that's where she kind of like messed up at because my thing is if but it could have been like just a small town like everyone knows each other like oh you know whatever but clearly he didn't know her and you know uh his former wife uh laura if you take his swimming lessons why you got to tell those people your business like if you there strictly to you know uh get swimming lessons because you got a purpose because you're doing something would it be the reason for you to uh what what would be the reason for you to uh tell them everything you know what i'm saying if you're gonna lie you might as well lie all the way around you feel me lie all the way around Mm-hmm. the lady <clears throat> I bet you time she got off that phone, she put that shit together like, oh, man. But anyway, <clears throat> my my voice is going. Like, when you be talking for a long time, your voice be going, god damn. <laughs> like, seriously. Let me drink some water. This is the part that I need to... um. <clears throat> that I need to um take out all this damn f- clearing my throat. Let me clear my throat. Let me think about that song. Mm. Yeah, so basically, so he goes on to like this whole investigative stuff, like trying to find out, like, you know, um, everything about her like you know the first thing he goes to is an old nursing home or center or wherever place uh his ex what well, not ex-wife former wife um mother was right because remember she said that you know her mother died it was a funeral that she didn't go to and all this stuff right but come to find out, right, you know, when he's sitting there, he finds out, like, oh, okay. No, she he said, she said, oh, Laura's mother didn't die. Laura moved her out of here and said she was moving with her. So she had a whole scheme going, like, <clears throat> she had him thinking that her mother died, but her mother was really alive. Mm-hmm. Like, she went all in, like, yo... This dude don't deserve no truth for me. Like you, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? And that's that's why people like. See, I don't understand like when people are in relationships with people who are like this, who are abusive and controlling, and it's like you already identify this. You know this person is not for you. Then why should they know anything to use against you? Why should they have uh? Why should they know everything about your life? Why should you uh, tell this person anything that they anything that they could use against you? You know, he basically isolated her. She was on a beach. You know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of what kind of man? You know what I'm saying? Uh, doesn't allow his his wife to go to his, uh, her mother's funeral. Like, let's think about that logically. Like, come on. You know what I'm saying? That's why she was able to, um, say that because it's like, oh, they get off to that. Like, oh yeah, well, she's choosing me over her family. See, that's the thing that, you know, uh, these, these type of men or partners, right? Um, They like to isolate. You know you know what I'm saying? Like they like to isolate. And so that's what he was doing. He was isolating her. He was isolating her. But she played him. <clears throat> okay, she 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 strategically started to study him and, and learn him. You feel what I'm saying? Um but in this day and age, like, because it's like at the end of the day, she was trying to utilize it for what she could utilize it for. Because obviously, he had some money or something because she had money in that bag. And so for you to go to a whole nother country, 
or another town or whatever and get a house and your house is furnished, all this stuff, and you got food and all that stuff, you're not struggling. It ain't like she went to the other town and went to a shelter or nothing like that. So obviously she was like um, getting her money together. You feel what I'm saying? Like, all right, I'm going to just pretend to be what you think I what, what what you think you want me to be like I'm gonna be what you want me to be but I'm not really that you feel what I'm saying that's why the movie is called sleeping with the enemy because it's like she realized this person ain't for her he he ain't for her he don't care about her he don't love her and she realized that so it was like you don't love and you don't care about me so what's the point of me telling you the truth why I gotta speak the truth to you you know what I'm saying? Why should that be like a priority for me? You feel me? So that's that's the type of time that she was on. She was she was planning her great escape. <laughs> Homegirl was like, listen, I've been with him three years, seven months, and six days, yo. That's like that's some time you that's something like like she crossing out on the calendar, crossing out the days on the calendar. That you know what I'm saying? That's some shit that that someone says when they get out of jail. Cause when you when you really are you know in a healthy relationship and it's really good you know what I'm saying because people yeah like everybody have conflict you feel what I'm saying but to walk on eggshells in your home but you know when you really in something that's really good it's like the years just go by you probably be like oh I think we were, we was together for like eight maybe ten years like it's like you lose you lose. Uh, you lose time. It's like time really is not a factor. You have to some when you see people that's really you know happy or really like you know content in a relationships. It's like around content. It's like they don't really. The time is just like then they then they really have to start thinking about like we met in two thousand and ten or two thousand and twelve. Which one was it? Like they really have to think about that stuff. But for to sit down and be like, oh, we've been together all this time. Like, I I just see it like that. Like, yo, you feel me? I just see it like, yeah. Like, you trying to get out of this type of shit. You feel me? Like, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You you already mentally gone. Like, you mentally somewhere else, B. Like, and some people just be allowed the person to keep bringing them down. Like, you know what I'm saying? This woman right here in this movie... Um, she knew exactly what it was. She knew exactly uh what was going on and she was not gonna deal with that shit. She was not gonna allow this dude to bring her down. Oh no, she was she was not having it. But he went on his little investigate for investigation, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he found out where, you know, um, where the mother was staying because she did move her to a different nursing home or whatever and i guess somehow he found out like he 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 hired investigators to find out where she was at and they put like three investigators on uh on a um on a case so he was able to like you know find out like yo where she was at and so, you know, he went there, whatever. His his mother, her mother, uh, his former wife, Laura, who's now, her name is Sarah because she's in a whole nother uh, country or state or town or whatever. Um, And so he actually goes to where, and she's in the same town where her mother is at in a nursing home. Um, And so he finds her her mother he he actually goes out his way and finds um his former wife Laura mother and she's blind and she has other issues as well and so you know he say something to her whatever but his whole thing is trying to get um get it's trying to uh find out if Sarah is visiting her mother and Sarah's Laura. So, well, I guess when I'm talking about him, I could say Laura. Okay. So he's trying to find out if his former wife, who he think is, who, 
who faked her death to get away from him because he realized that he put us together. So he found the mother. And so he had the nurse at home or whatever. And, you know, he's just staying there, like going there every day, um, trying to see when she comes. Right. So um, Laura, who changed her name to Sarah, she going about her life. Um, she meets like this guy who's like her neighbor. They kind of like start hanging out together. He's like a um, a drama professor. Like, he, he works at, like, a university or something like that. And so they have, like, their little encounters together. And, you know, she's <clears throat> living her life. So she explains to him and let him know about, um, you know, her mother and that she hasn't seen him or whatever like that, right? So he puts on – it's a lot that I'm – because if I talk about this, we'd be here all night. So if you guys want to see the movie Sleeping with the Enemy is a 1991 movie, you guys can see it because I'm just summarizing it at this point. So basically, you know, he's not her boyfriend, nothing like that. He's her neighbor. They spend time together. He's a drama uh, professor or instructor, or whatever. He treats drama. And so he has like different... Um, costumes and stuff right and so you know she lets him know about you know some of the stuff that's going on which you shouldn't even do <clears throat> like in real life I feel like listen you got to be wary of who you tell your business to but anywho she you know explained that to him what was going on and so you know she wanted to see her her mother but you know because of the circumstances, because she know that, you know, he probably is going to be, like, looking for her. Like, she know that eventually he's going to find out. But somehow, you know, the guy, her neighbor, you know, she tells him everything. And so he gives her clothes, like, to dress up like a man. Like, he gives her, like, a wig, like, that's, that's a short haircut for a man. And she put a fitted cap on, and then he gave her a fake mustache, and then she put on, like, you know, men clothing to disguise herself and which worked so she actually went to like the nursing home her mother was in right because it doesn't even matter like her mother's blind but like the senses are so strong like of course you know your daughter's voice the scent how she feel all that stuff right so of course she was man able to um uh, speak to her moms and stuff like that and let her know what was going on like as far as she had to leave him or whatever and meanwhile <clears throat> this part was kind of like intense because um her former husband was there because like he was staking out the the nursing home because he knew that at some point she wanted to see, she was gonna go see her mother so he knew that so he was like staking out but he didn't know um <clears throat> That she would show up in disguise. So they came close to seeing each other or whatever. But he, she left. Uh, so while she was in there visiting the um, her mother, talking to her or whatever, he was outside talking to, like, the hospital staff or the nursing home staff, um, letting them know, like, oh, well, if anybody does come here, you know, please let them, let me know because we're trying to throw a surprise party or do something. Something he said. And so, you know, when him and his former wife, Laura, who was dressed up like a man, came into contact, <coughs> of course, he's not thinking nothing of it. You know what I'm saying? So she walking in front of him to go out and he walking behind her to go out of the facility. But then the nurse or somebody like called him back and told him like, oh, you wanted to inquire about such and such who like the, the visitation, um, status and she and she told him like listen nobody been here for six months but like a young man came today and she said oh he just left out the thing and so he realized and and he runs out there but it's like too late the person left and then you know he kind of goes to like um Laura's mom's and you know tell her like oh pretend like he's a cop and he's gathering information and stuff like that and so he was able to find out that you know she was dating dealing with a man who worked at like a university so he goes to that university you know which is like I don't know but you know whenever you think that you know your child's in danger you probably want to tell but she was blind so she told him or whatever so he goes there and 
find some random drama instructor and like wait for him outside of his car <laughs> to beat him up like and this guy like yo it ain't me I'm gay and like <laughs> so he's just going on the university randomly and, like attacking people that he think his wife is with like come on like homeboy you crazy like and that's what they do like they like to attack other you know other people that they think um, you having a, a a relationship with even like when you think of in terms of now like when when you tell someone who uh, is abusive you don't want to be with them no more they want to uh, get mad because you dating somebody else or want to um, attack that person I mean like break their bones like you know what I'm saying like do the most craziest stuff to that person but basically. To make a long story short, you know, he found out where she was um, and he kind of like, you know, went to her home, uh, you know, physically, you know, first he was just fucking with her, like in terms of he would um, like he did stuff in the home, like he fixed up the stuff in the cabinets, he put the, he lined up the, um, the towels, like, you know, and then he played, like, some music that he always played when they was together. And so, like, when she saw the cabinet and she heard the music, she kind of knew he was there. But, you know, he was he, he had up on her, one up on her and stuff like that, you know, because he a man or whatever. But uh, that night she was supposed to be doing something with her neighbor, right? But fast, going back, right, because... What happened is, like, when he found out about, um, when he went to that university and was, like, beating up a random person that he thought was the neighbor, because remember, the neighbor works at a, that university, but that, you know, that person, like, oh, it was a whole bunch of drama instructors. Somehow, he found out where they was going to be at, and he was at, like, what is, like, an amusement park, a carnival if you if you will like you know they was on like the fair as well and he was like watching her and stuff like that and he followed them to the home you know she was supposed to they were supposed to do something at her house that night or something so he was going home to do something and then come right back and so when he came back and see she he saw that she had the chain lock on he knew something was up so he broke in the house while the husband was at attacking her or whatever but you know the hus the husband bodied him like he like he had no chance yo he got his he got rocked I'm telling you when I tell you yo he got rocked he got his shit rocked and so that that whole time while the husband was the former husband was fighting her new neighbor or whatever well her neighbor not new neighbor you know somehow he dropped the gun and she got the gun and so she was pointing a gun at him you know and he like you know trying to be all sweet and talk or you know nice and all that stuff and it's like my dude like you came all the way here you feel what I'm saying now you want to be all like talking all calm and and being all like like what's all this about you feel me it, it's just a bunch of bs right so she picks up the phone and call the cops and she like yo there's an intruder in my house or whatever did she said on the phone she said she shot him or maybe something and when she hung up the phone she shot him up yo she shot him listen he got body. But you know, of course, these movies, they always got to be so dramatic. Like, when you think he dead, like, 10 minutes later, he somehow he got the gun. And he, he squeezed it, but it, it doesn't do anything. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah, whatever. But that's basically, you know, the movie and stuff like that. Like, that's how it ends. Like, he still, like, he went on this kind of, like, he just went crazy and wanted to find out where she was at. Like, she, you know... And when you think about in real life, that's how these these people are. You know what I'm saying? They become obsessive and crazy, and they want to, um, you know, continue to follow you and stuff like that. And you know, uh, because they feel like you are their property. That's what uh, this guy thought she was like. She thought that he was her property. You know what I'm saying? And that 
Uh, he could do whatever it is that he wanted to do with her. Um, that she couldn't be with no other man. You know, she couldn't live a life that she wanted to live. You know, be happy. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like that was just a a a, a crazy situation because if he can't have her, nobody else could have her. And that's the kind of like the the mindset that he had in terms of that. But she wasn't she wasn't having that. She was not having that, you know, and it's just like, you know, sometimes people get into these relationships and then they feel stuck, you know, and that they have to, uh, you know, conform because it's like, oh, this, what well, is guy, he's not going to leave me alone. So I'm just going to stay with him. Listen, he ain't going to leave you alone, but you can leave him alone and go on about your life. You know, but when you have situations like a psychotic, crazy person, abusive person or anything like that, what you want to do is leave, move, move out of that apartment. You hear what I'm saying? Move out of that house. Just leave. Be. She only left with a bag and some um and some belongings and her. uh, She just left with one bag. She had one bag. All that material thing doesn't even matter. You're like, your life is not, you know, worth all that. Like, because I know some people out there who stay in these kind of relationships because it's financially, because they're being financially supported. Or they have a, you know, uh, a home that's warm, food, a bed. You know, they have a place to stay. It's, it's a source of survival, you know what I'm saying? Is a is a, a survival mechanism, right? And you know, even though like within this movie or whatever, she could have been left. Like she was with him like three years, seven months, and six days, as she said, right? But why she didn't leave the first year? I mean, because you know, it happened right out after that um, the honeymoon when he became very abusive. Like so, he he did the power switch after. You know, he got the paperwork on her. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah, I own you. You're mine now. You know, and that's how uh, people will see it. Abusive men, abusive partners. You know what I'm saying? We'll see it like, oh, you're, you're uh, um, my property. You know, but what leads one to think is, why didn't she leave the, like, you know, the same day he attacked her, like right after the honeymoon, like within that year. It took her three years, seven months, and six days to leave him. <clears throat> and she uh, she planned. That was like strategically planning. You know what I'm saying? She she They was no longer on the same side or the same team or none of that. You know what I'm saying? She saw him as her enemy. So, you know, when you see somebody as an enemy, you know, you're not going to move the same around them. You're not going to give them information that, you know, uh, that they could utilize against you. Like, they no longer have privileges to um, the information uh, that you was previously provided, right? Because previously she, he knew that, her mother was sick and was like in a nursing home or whatever and he knew she knew that he didn't need to know any more information about her mother like he he didn't need to know nothing like he could just think that she you know passed away or whatever the case may be right so she started withholding stuff from from that she started like i would like to think started saving the money that he was giving and she lied to him about having a job Meanwhile, while she he thought she was working those little three hours a week, I mean, three days a week, she was working those three days a week part time at the library. You know what I'm saying? She was never working part time at the library. Why would she have to work when you, you know what I'm saying, taking care of her financially? She don't got to work. Like, she didn't, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times people be like, oh, like, well, let me. Do something, stay busy. Yeah, you could stay busy, but that doesn't mean that this person is not going to physically get at you. You feel what I'm saying? That doesn't, like, negate that. But she made him believe and convinced him, like, yo, I need to work a part-time job. I'm in this home losing my mind. Like, you out working. Let me do something. 
I like books. Let me work at the library. All I'm doing is, you know, put organizing the books on the shelf or, you know, handing out books. That's it. Right. Meanwhile, while he thinks she doing that whole time, she getting swimming lessons. Because she's trying to bounce. You feel what I'm saying? But she strategically, she knew eventually she was going to leave him. But she had to do it in a way in which she thought she was dead. Right? That's that's the movie right there. And there's like other movies now. Hold on. They have... This other movie, so let me say this. They have this other movie. It's kind of similar, but it's it's different. It's called Death Saved My Life, and it came out in 2021. And I think Megan Good is in that movie. Uh, and it's pretty much like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's... And it's and it's characterized as a horror film because this is like truly a, a a horror story. Like you in your house and your spouse is like beating on you and all that stuff. That's a horror. That's horror. That's like you know what I'm saying. That's like you know what I'm saying. So it's pretty much the same thing. But in this movie, she has a a child. Um, in the mo- I saw I I seen the movie a long time ago. Um, so it's like, I can't break it down that I have to watch it again as far as if I wanted to break it down, like I did this movie, but that movie is pretty recent. Um, death saved my life. Um, it came out 2021 and it's basically the same thing or whatever, you know, this guy, he doesn't even want her to work. You know, he wants her to stay home. You know, he tells her how to dress. Like, she wanted to wear a particular dress. He didn't want her to wear it. He told her how to wear her dress, you know. And the random attacks, like, you know, her getting physically beaten and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, her having to actually fake her own death. You know what I'm saying? But I think this one was a little bit uh, different where... Um, he paid, hired someone to kill her or some shit. It was, I don't know. It's something I, I would have to watch it again. So, but that's a more recent movie. Um, but it's kind of like the same thing in a way. But if you guys want to check out that movie, um, Death Saved My Life or, you know, you could listen, listen, <laughs> you could, uh, watch the Sleeping With The Enemy, um, that came out in 1991. Uh, either or um but yeah that's it for me because uh this is definitely <laughs> definitely like a long life and I uh I'm grateful for you guys listening to this in its entirety if this is your first time uh you know tuning in definitely subscribe like and if you have any comments that you want to share if you want if if this was some type of thought provoking thing for you and you have something that you want to add definitely in a comment section um uh definitely uh give your views or whatever or if you want to share your story share your story you know you're free to write whatever you guys want to write um in a comment section Um, but I want to invite all of you guys to, um, to join me at www.beautifulstartpodcast.com. You know, you come to that website every Monday, there will be a new episode, um, that you guys could listen to every Monday's encouraging, positive, you know. It's, it's, it's great. So you guys could definitely um, sign up for that. And then there, there's other things on the website that you guys can um, further look into as well. Um, yeah, so definitely I'm, I'm inviting you all to come to the website and listen to the podcast, the show on Mondays. Every Monday there is a new episode. And for the duration of this month, I will be live every Wednesday at 9 p.m. here on the YouTube page. So definitely 
um, tune in and be a part of that. But definitely come to the website, www.beautifulstartpodcast.com and join me there. But I thank you so much for rocking out with this um, with this live. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty... <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I knew it was going to be long, but I didn't know it was going to be long, long, you know, um, I tried to, uh, you know, I wanted to initially, um, show like some type of illustrations on, of the movie, but like I said, listen, (laughs) that's a lot of work. Okay. I'm trying to, uh enjoy <laughs> enjoy the live talking maybe in the future i'll do that if this was like a video i probably would have did that but i'm like no i just talk about it or whatever but um yeah so let me invite you guys again to the website www.beautifulstartpodcast.com definitely uh come to the website listen to the podcast there's a new episode on Monday that is not on the YouTube page. It's not on the YouTube page. So I know a lot of the people out there who, you know, put the stuff that's on the, the YouTube page also on like the podcast on a website. It's the same thing. But no, it's a whole different another show. But I thank you so much for rocking out. Have a great day at night, depending on when you listening to this. Um yeah. All right, peace.